Welcome to ROMP, the Rural Oklahoma Museum of Poetry in Locust Grove with our gracious host, Sean Perkins. Hi. The mission of the museum is to allow people to have an experience of poetry. And it is an old fashioned experience so that you really do feel it. You've also got like a thing you can put your face that's, in? That's correct. What's that for? It, well, you can go be Walt Whitman. Was he Leaves of Grass? It, yes, his birthday was yesterday, I believe. Leaves of grass, I see you all around. The floodwaters come. I hope I don't drown. <laughs> Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass. That's the abbreviated version. <laughs> I'm nobody. Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us, don't tell. They'd banish us, you know. How dreary to be somebody. How ignoble like a frog to tell your name the live long day to an admiring bog. Emily Dickinson. Your poetry <laughs> is quite good, as I hear. <laughs> Mine, I just try to rhyme, oh dear. <laughs> My favorite definition of what is a good poem is what Emily Dickinson said. She said, you know it is a poem, and when you're reading it, and you feel like the top of your head is coming off. Well, there's poison ivy right there. Where, where? Right there, all of that. Oh, poison ivy, <laughs> you beckon me to touch. <laughs> But I know if I do, I will regret it so much. <laughs> I have been warned of your presence by our fine, fair host, Sean. She said, don't touch it. Watch out. It springs forth from the lawn. <laughs> so the exhibit this year is in the bones. And it's all about bones, all these things that make us, that hold us together. Oh. <laughs> Pulling the teeth we'll out. Just, we'll do it free form. <laughs> oh dear, my tooth has fallen out. My skull is white and chalky to the touch. This rude man came in and didn't care for me much. Thanks for joining us on this excursion of Traveling Oklahoma. We'll see you down the road where you can find the poetry gold. You can't fight City Hall. That's the phrase most commonly associated with any City Hall. After all, they're traditionally serious, somber, even sullen. Traditionally. She's so cute. Look at that. She's like got her little hood on. At Tulsa City Hall, a city councilor's decision to bring her baby to work <laughs> is upending tradition. A lot of of folks assume they can't bring their baby to work, right, and they're not actually asking, or if they're asking, maybe an employer might say no without trying it. It's worthwhile to try it, I, yeah. The reaction from colleagues. I think everyone has embraced this with open arms. Looking over when we're having uh, a real busy day, it's relaxing to me. It's so cool, it's so cool to have a, a mom here cuddling her baby. Mom is new city councilor Kara Joy McKee. Baby is two-month-old Sula. T-S-U-L-A. It's a Cherokee name. It means fox. Just an infant, she's already practicing her city hall face of righteous indignation. Oh, you're turning so red. Yes, you are. And doing what many people feel like doing in city hall meetings, falling asleep. No offense to mom. Revisit some of our, our, our policies and make sure that we in the future have the option for an established festival to have more of a buffer. Cuteness factor aside, the impact of regularly having a baby in the building is hitting people at their core. Something that someone said to me in the elevator the other, the other day, I, she said, oh, my daughter was about her age when I had to send her to daycare, and it was like giving a piece of my soul away. You can't fight City Hall. But maybe you wouldn't have to if more people really brought their babies to work and okay, helped everyone realize what all of this me. is about. Looking at her face and thinking, okay, the future is here. What are we going to do? How are we going to do this right? It's, uh, it's inspirational for sure. Look at all this trash. Take a tour around the property of John Daybar. I don't know who's... Uh, vase that is it's not ours and the landscape looks as strange to a visitor this tire is not mine as it does to the homeowner i don't know whose flamingo that is it's not ours a life displaced except for one conviction 
that the flood did not have to happen. I believe it could have been prevented. If they operated properly, they would not have had to let so much water go to protect the integrity of the dam. To us, it may seem simple, but it's not. From the Army Corps, an equal conviction that nothing could have been done differently. We'll store everything we can to prevent flooding downstream until our flood pool is full. And that's what occurred in this storm event. Our flood pool was at its capacity, and at that point, um, the reservoir had all it could handle. It was full. They have got to change their zero release policy until there's rainfall on the ground. The Corps says that the policy is in place due to the unpredictable nature of weather and helps prevent accidentally exacerbating a volatile situation. We would be releasing water and then it would have rained on top of what we were releasing and we could have made the flooding worse by our release. They should resign. Each and every one of them should step up and say, I failed in my job, I'm resigning, I'll go do something else. And I hope it's not something that involves managing water. It's understandable that people are frustrated and um, they were impacted and we're sympathetic to that. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, hear me and hear me good. I'm going out to pick up my wife. She is gonna be crying, she is gonna be distraught, and uh, you all are the cause of it. Kristen Dickerson is reporting from the field, but her boss isn't Channel 8 or the station in Texas she went to after Tulsa. Her boss... Now it's almost like my boss is God. So I'm like, all right, God, here's this content, here are these wonderful stories that build faith. Now what? But before we get to that now what, we have to go back to the first now what, the one that comes around for most people when one day you wake up and say... Is this it? Is this all there is to life? Because if so, I, I want more out of life. And that more wasn't coming from work or from vacations or from money. So she and her husband, Peter, were in France, not Spain, took a leap of faith, literally, and embarked on a 500-mile trek on the Camino de Santiago. Seeing the cattle in the field and then the horses and the sheep, and they all had little bells on them. Have you always been a, a person of faith? I have not always been a person of faith but it's grown the last 10 years. This morning, we woke up. It was like the most beautifully peaceful sound. Monks singing, being piped into the dormitory. Amongst all the beauty and peace, however, is some angst. To do this three-month journey, which also includes trips to India and Israel, she decided to quit her job. A part of me wants to freak out because I'm like, okay, what am I going to do for money? How am I going to find a job? What am I going to do for a living? Am I going to do the same type of job? So right now, it's still kind of up in the air as far as what's next. Because oh, yeah. I think a lot of people... <laughs> Don't freak me out, Bert. Well, because I think a lot of people envy both of you and, and yet also feel like... Uh, well, that's the reason I, I couldn't do it because I couldn't live with that uncertainty and not knowing where the money's going to come from. Yeah. It's so scary. <laughs> but that fear has been offset by both the souls they've met on the trail. So that is the voice of Melissa, who is from New York. And the sights of God's splendor at every turn. I'm really just taking a minute to just really stare at it and absorb how beautiful and how incredible life is. It is a faith walk like I have never experienced in my life. While doing wonders for her faith, it's also done wonders for her marriage. What has this done for your relationship? It saved it. I think it, I think it's really saved our relationship. Taking a leap of faith, one step at a time. So going forward, I know that if an idea comes or an opportunity and I feel my heart just jump with excitement, even though it's scary, I know I have to go toward that. Very impressive what you're doing and it takes a lot of guts for both you guys. Thanks. But seriously, I might need some money. So like, save extra. <laughs> Bert Mumala, tells us Channel 8. You again? I told you I'd be back. Yeah, and you're glutton for punishment.
I'm gonna enjoy cutting you down to size. Yeah, you couldn't cut a fart if you had a bucket of baked beans. Tell me when. Drop! Welcome to the Return to Prairie Song, a place we love so much we simply had to come back. Not only because there's so much to see, but to tell you all about the upcoming Western Heritage Days extravaganza. Well, this will be the 15th year that we furnished a place for it. And there's a corral down there, and there'll be bleachers all the way around the corral down there, and that's where the, they perform. Look at this. This is you? Yeah. Ten and years. what year is this? 44. You ever wonder what happened to all these kids? Well, most of them's already dead. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Didn't mean that to be a downer. <laughs> well, I don't beat around the bush, I just tell you like it is. Oh, is this a cemetery? Yeah. For a real one? Part of it is and part of it did. See, we're living in a throwaway society, and they was going to the dump, and this fellow that was hauling them to the dump, there's about 400 stones, and I went there and I got the ones with the old dates, and put them out here, and the rest of them went to the dump. Rest, mother, rest in quiet sleep, while friends in sorrow o'er thee weep. That's from 1870. Are you gonna be out here someday? Well, I want to if I get it done before I die. Yeah, you walk up there and then take a look to the right or the left. Okay. Huh. Oh, God! <laughs> I mean, it does, that's startling. <laughs> Boy, he's goofy, I'll tell you what. That's a shipping casket. A shipping casket? Yeah. And what is a shipping casket? Well, like you're down here from Chicago, and you die, they put you in that and put you on the train and ship you back to Chicago. In a shipping casket, I'm guessing that's used multiple times. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, we could use it for you tomorrow, and then a week later, use it for me. Thanks for joining us on this excursion of Traveling Oklahoma. I'm Burt Mumolo signing off. See you down the road. <laughs>